<sighs> Alright, sorry, I wasn't recording when I did when I was talking. Okay, so I'm gonna be reviewing the nineteen eighty crime drama called Cruisin', which was directed by William Freakin and stars Al Pacino. The movie is about a New York detective who goes undercover as a gay man to solve a series of serial kill killings committed on gay men. Um, the movie is loosely based on a real serial killer called Paul Bateson, who actually appeared in the original Exorcist as a in a cameo as a radiologist during the hospital scenes. Paul Bateson was a gay man in real life, and he was also a radiologist. Um, so yeah, um, I found this movie to be okay, um, now this movie was very controversial when it first came out, mainly because of how it portrayed the gay community, um, I'm just gonna guess maybe because how they, sh they show gays as being, um, sexual deviants and, uh, very unsympathetic towards the uh feelings of others. I'm just gonna guess I'm not gay, so I don't know anything about that, but I'm just guessing that's probably why it was controversial. And also because it shows police corruption too. And that being it in two char two cop characters, one who's played by Joe Spinell, they go around and harass these gay people and try to get sexual favors from them. And, um, you know, one of the, uh, gay characters that he always, Joe Spinell's character and the other one always harasses, like, he goes to the chief of police and tells him, like, hey, these guys are, like, really scummy, they always mess with us, and the guy, the cop just, like, brushes it off. So it's, like, it, it just shows, like, the problems that gays face at that time and probably still do today. Um, but yeah... <sighs> Like, I know, I know this movie was protested by a lot of gay groups, like, during the making of it, and also when it was being released, and this film got a lot of bad ratings and stuff, but and nowadays, this is 2020, uh, a lot of this stuff would be considered tame nowadays, like, I could see why some of it was controversial, like, you know, uh, there's, like, very graphic sex scenes in it. Um, there's, um, you know, a, a, a guy going around killing gay men. Like, there's, like, one disturbing scene in the movie where, uh, a victim's tied up. They, he, the killer hog ties a victim up, and the guy's, like, terrified and shit, and then the killer stabs him to death in the back. And it's, like, very, kind of, like, a very disturbing scene. It kind of reminded me a little bit of the New York Ripper when the, the prostitute was tied up and he, the killer did, was, like, slicing her up. But, um, yeah, and this movie, like, mixes genres, too. It's, like, a, a crime thriller, a suspense mystery whodunit movie, kind of mixed with, like, a slasher movie. And, um, uh, like a film noir. Like, it mixes several genres together. And that's what, it kind of reminded me a lot of, like, Maniac, but not as graphic. And, like I said, the New York Ripper. And it's set in the in New York in the early 80s, so it has that grimy, sleazy feel to it. Like, for some reason, New York was just a nasty-ass place back in the 70s and 80s. Like, it just looked <laughs> disgusting, and there's, like, a bunch of porn shops and stuff like that. I'm only guessing from the movies I've watched. Also, kind of has, like, that taxi driver feel to it. Like, any of those type of movies, like, it has, like, that kind of feel to it. And, like, the, the, like, the acting's all pretty good. I think the best one is, um, of course... Al Pacino, he's like the most seasoned actor, I would say, in the movie. And, but he kind of plays like his the, his typical characters, like the more subdued, quiet type of person. But if you mess up with him, he'll kick your ass kind of thing. Um, 
That's, his characters are kind of similar in most of the movies I've seen him in. Um, yeah, um, I also like how the movie shot, too, and, like, the soundtrack. There's actually, like, a drum, there's a drum song. It, the Germs was a punk band in the early 80s. Um, and th that, I was surprised to hear that in the movie. And, and then there's, uh, you know, they have, like, techno disco music, and then they have, like, kind of, like, creepy, um, horror movie music. And then, like, how it's shot, it's monochromatic. So there's, like, a lot of grays and blues and blacks, and it gives off, like, that very, like, dirty, cold, lonely, like, type of feel to the movie. Um, like, that grindhouse kind of look. Yeah, um, I don't know really more to say about it. Um, it's definitely an interesting movie by William Freakin. Um, I, I'm trying to figure out some other movies he's seen. The only one I can think of is, like, Bug and Killer Joe and The Exorcist, but it's, like, a very different kind of movie that I've seen him make. And, uh, I mean, it might not be his most well-known one. If it's well-known, it's mainly because of the controversy. But I, I would say check it out. It's not as bad as most people claim it to be. But because a lot of people say it has, like, bad acting, which I didn't think the acting was that bad. Um, And then the, because of the controversy, they say, oh, it's so gross and just disturbing. But I, like I said, I've seen so many disturbing movies. Like, it doesn't really bother me now. But, yeah, I would say give it a watch. I mean, maybe it's a one-time watch. But, yeah, it wasn't like a waste of time. But, anyways, I get, that's my review.